In this video, we're going to take a look at a basic setup for dropping in a trail render, and we're also going to look at how you can control the overall shape of your trail once it's been created. Now, just for the fun of it, I'm going to set up something a little special, just uh, so, I don't know, just because it looks cool. And then if you want to follow along and or make things a little more complicated on your end, you're welcome to do that. The first thing I'm going to do is, cr is just kind of frame up on my character. I'll use her as kind of a central pivot location for the camera. And I'll go to Create and make a sphere. Now, with this sphere, I'm going to hit Control shift n and make an empty game object, which I'm going to call Pivot1. And I'm going to move it you know, just a certain number of units. It doesn't really matter how far backwards in the Z direction. Then I'm going to duplicate that pivot and we'll name this one pivot two. And we'll move this one back even further. Now I'm going to make a quick hierarchy. We're going to take the sphere and parent it to pivot one. Then we'll take pivot one and parent it to pivot two. So that if you were to walk down the hierarchy, we go from the sphere to pivot one and to pivot two. Now we're going to do some animations. So let's start here with pivot one and we'll go under window animation and I'll just click on record. And I've got a couple of animation curves in here. I'm just going to delete out from when I was testing this out, but the name works. So we'll call this sphere trail anim and hit save. And yeah, sure. Replace it because there's nothing to replace anyway. Now what I'm going to do is just spin this around. So let's start off by dropping on a keyframe on rotate Y. And then we'll go forward, say, not too quick. We're going to take a little bit of time here. So let's say five seconds. And we'll just set rotate Y to 360. Set our curve type over to loop. And then we're done recording. We could just go ahead and stop. Now, let's go right into pivot two. And we'll pretty much do the same thing. So let's just go up to window, animation, and we'll hit record and here's our sphere trail anim. Let's just make sphere trail anim two. And we'll do the same thing. We will select rotate Y, drop on a keyframe. This time though, we'll offset the time. So instead of doing like five seconds, we'll go up to about eight seconds. And it doesn't have to be precise at all. We'll take rotate Y and set it up to 360. And set this to loop as well. Stop recording. And let's just hit play and see what we get. So now we have a sphere that is just kind of flying through our level in kind of a spirographic motion. So we're going to use this as a basis to add a trail. Now, there's a couple of different ways to go about this. It is recommended not to apply a trail renderer directly to an object. It's better to use an empty game object and then parent it in. And by doing that, we do allow ourselves to be able to see that mesh. So if you're trying to do this on your own and you just can't see the trail mesh, uh, double check and make sure that you didn't add your trail renderer directly to a polygon object. So what I'll do is just create a new empty game object. So control shift N and we'll call this trail. Now I'm going to take the trail object I just created and I'll parent it to my sphere. So I got this nice little hierarchy starting to form. Now under component, we'll go under particles and drop on a trail renderer. Now right off the bat, this will work, but it doesn't have a material. So you just get the great big scary pink magenta trail, which is a little hard to see and a little distracting. So the first thing I'm going to do is expand my materials. You have size and you have the element in here. Now uh, size controls the number of elements you have and multiple elements will just stack materials on top of these polygons. Generally, you're only going to use a single element. There's no reason why you couldn't use multiples if you wanted to. Now, I'm going to select my little select button here. And with the default particle package that you can load into Unity, you get Flame D here, which is a nice contrasty kind of broken up flame material. So we'll use that. And now all we have to do is hit play. And we're already getting a trail out of this. It's tying in a knot in that one spot, which is a little interesting. And it's offset by a little bit as well, where the uh, game object isn't exactly parented to the center of it. 
That's true. That's true. There is a little bit of an offset there. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'll just grab my trail object and we'll just zero out its transforms. And that'll move it right to the center of the sphere. You also notice you can move stuff around here in the view and it'll create a trail for you. And I got to tell you, that's just a source of endless fun as far as I'm concerned. But we'll set that to zero and hit play. And now it's following right along with the sphere. And there you go. So there's your quick run through of the setup. There's really not much to it. Now let's talk about changing the shape of our trail. Now to do this, I'm going to pull my camera back quite a ways and rotate up in the air. I'll just go ahead and move my character right into the middle of all this mess. Now the controls we have for the shape of our trail include time, start width, and end width. Time is the only one that's not painfully obvious. All this does is control how long in seconds your trail is going to exist. So as we start to shorten this, we get a much shorter trail. So here it is at around one second. And you can make it tiny. You just have a tiny little trail following along if you wanted to, which could be really cool if you had an animated texture. Or you can start to stretch it out. And you could end up with it being so long that it ends up curling back over itself. Just remember that's a single texture that is being copied, or I'm sorry, that is being stretched to make that happen. So if the texture looks bad being stretched, you'll want to keep that sort of thing in mind. But we can kick this up until the thing are, like wraps completely around to itself. And you see you can get some really neat effects that way. So let's pull this back down to something a little more manageable. Now that is how we can control the length of our trail. We also have start width and end width, which are fairly obvious. Start width, let me pull this down to something just a little bit easier to read. Start width will just take the beginning of our trail and make it wider. So we can make it wide like so, or we can make it narrow. Pretty straightforward. And then end width is exactly the same for the end of the trail, so we can make the end very, very thick or we can bring that down close to zero and we can make it very thin. Now you can set this to negative and your trail will pinch in the middle as you see here. Not sure how useful that would be, but there it is anyway, should you uh, need to do that. And really that's all I wanted to show here is just a quick look at the setup and then control over the shape of your trail, of course, being the start and end width. Always though, uh, remember, if you like, you can take a look here inside your scene view while you're playing back and you can actually see this mesh in action, so you can see that mesh getting thinner over time. So if we set our end width to zero, you'll see that coming down to a point right there where it stops. It's a great way to visualize this, and if we increase our start width, you can see those first initial polygons getting very fat. But that, unless you have anything to add, Lee? No, that's it. All right, that'll wrap things up for this video. Thank you for watching.